In this video tutorial, we're gonna look at Google Drive and how you can use it to accomplish basically three things and three really amazing, very useful things. Number one, we're gonna look at how to use it to store your files in the cloud, a safe place for all your files. Number two, we're gonna look at how you can use it to create online in the cloud. And number three, we're gonna look at how you can use Google Drive to share and collaborate with others. So let's get started learning how to use Google Drive. The first thing you need to do is get signed up to use Google Drive. And if you already have a Google account, you're already set up and ready to use Google Drive. But if you don't have a Google account, you can simply go to google.com slash drive, or you can just go to google.com even and click on this symbol. It's the Google Apps symbol. Just click on it and look for Drive. Either way, you should get to basically the same location. And then here on this page, you can just click go to Google Drive to set up an account or if you already have an account to start using it. Now before I do that, I'm gonna click here on pricing just so you can see what we're looking at as far as cost is concerned for Google Drive. And Google Drive really does have a great free account option. You can see for completely free, you can get 15 gigabytes of storage in your Google Drive account. If you do wanna pay, you can get more than that. But for free, I think that's a really amazing offer that they give you, 15 gigabytes of storage space for free. Okay, so I'm gonna click here where it says go to Google Drive. And because I already have a Google account, it takes me in and here I am in my Google Drive account. And we're gonna start out with the reason number one to consider using Google Drive. And that is as a place to store and back up your files in the cloud. And whenever I go to Google Drive, this is pretty much what I see. You can see that this is my storage space in the cloud. Across the top, I have a quick access area. These are files that I've recently accessed and used or recently created. And so they are listed here for quick access so I can quickly get back into them. Underneath that, I have an area called folders. These are some folders I've recently created or used. And then under that, I have files, a list of the files that I have in my account. So that's what I'm seeing here. Now, if you don't like how this is laid out, notice here in the upper right, you have the option to click list view, and it just gives you a more simple alphabetical view with all of the documents, all of the folders, with very small icons so that you can see a lot of detail, a lot of information in a small space. And then you can switch back to grid view if you'd like here in the upper right also. In this case, I would like to switch to list view. I kind of like this look. I think it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit more simple and easy to understand. And so let's take a look now at how to get these files in the cloud into my Google Drive account. And there's really three basic ways that I can do that. One is I can create these files online in Google Drive just by using this new button. And I wanna show you how to do that a little bit later in reason number two. So that's one method of getting files, getting folders into my Google Drive account. A second way is to upload them. And let's look at how to do that right now. And let's say, for example, that I'm being asked to create a new class, and this new class is going to be a history class. Well, I might go to the new button and click to create a new folder, okay? This is just for organizational purposes, really. So I get a pop-up there, and it wants me to name the folder. I'll call this ninth grade history. And then I click the create button, and now I have a new folder in my Google Drive account. And of course, I can just continue to create folder after folder after folder using this new folder button. But now that I have this new ninth grade history folder, I'm gonna double click on it to open it up and you can see it's completely blank because I just created it. But inside of that folder now, I could create maybe a subfolder. So I'll click on new and folder again and I'll call this quizzes and tests, click create. Maybe I'll create another folder called handouts and worksheets. But this time, instead of going up and clicking new folder, I'm just going to right click in the white space and choose new folder. I actually prefer that to going up here to the new button. So this will be handouts and worksheets. Click create. And of course I could continue adding subfolder after subfolder. And inside of these folders, I could create folders and subfolders. Now notice across the top of the screen, as I dig into a particular folder, it creates a crumb trail is I think what they call it, but it's basically a history of where I am and how I got there. 
So I am in handouts and worksheets, and I got there from ninth grade history, and I got there from my Google Drive. At any time, I can just click ninth grade history, and I jump back one step, or my Google Drive, and I jump all the way out of this ninth grade history folder. Okay, but let's pretend that that's exactly what I want, a ninth grade history folder with two subfolders inside of it. How could I get a file, maybe a worksheet, a handout that's on my computer and upload it and put it into this subfolder? Well, I could double click on that to open it up and then there are a couple of different ways I could do this. One is I could click the new button, but this time instead of creating a folder or a subfolder, I could just go down and choose file upload. And at that point, it opens up a window that I can use to browse my computer. I can go to the different destinations and I can choose the file that I want to upload. So let's say that's it. I can just double click on it and it will upload it into this particular folder because that's the folder that I have open. Now that used to be how I uploaded all of my documents from my computer up into the cloud so that they're stored in Google Drive. But notice that in addition to just doing a file upload, you can also upload a whole folder. And in many cases, that's a much better option. You can choose an entire folder of photos or of documents or of whatever. It can be just about any kind of file and just click upload and the entire folder in this case is getting uploaded into my drive. Now, just like I showed you with creating folders, you don't have to really go up to new and click file upload. You can go here and just right click and choose upload files, upload folder. So that's a little bit faster option. The other thing you should know, and this is something that I've been doing more lately, and that is I've been minimizing the screen just a little bit and then finding a file that's on my computer and just clicking and dragging and dropping it onto the window. And it does the same exact thing. It uploads that photo in this case, but whatever the file is, it'll upload it and put it in the particular folder that you have open. So those are the two methods that I use most often for getting my files and folders into Google Drive. There is, however, another way to do it. And I'll be honest with you, I don't use this method. I think what I just showed you is, for me, the best way to back up my files and folders in Google Drive. I just click and drag and drop them in this box, or I upload a folder or some individual files. That's how I do it. That's what works best for me. And the nice thing about this method is at this point, I can just delete the originals. I can delete what's on my computer. They no longer take up any space on my computer once I move them to the trash. So that particular photo that I just deleted, it's completely gone off my computer, but it is backed up and it exists in the cloud here in my Google Drive account. So that's what I do. But for some people, they don't want that. Some people want to be able to synchronize files that are in the cloud and synchronize them to their device so that on this actual computer, on this computer that I'm using, there are copies of all of these files that are also in the cloud in my Google Drive account. So the nice thing about that is you can just save things to your computer and they get backed up to the cloud automatically. The downside to this is it means that these files and folders will take up space on your computer. Your computer hard drive gets more and more filled every time you save to your Google Drive if you do the sync method that I'm about to show you. So I just wanted to make that clear. There are some upsides to syncing and there are some downsides. Now it used to be that there was a program called Google Drive for Windows and one called Google Drive for Mac and that's what you used to synchronize your folders and your files. Well, in March of 2018, Google decided to get rid of Google Drive for Windows, Google Drive for Mac and it's been replaced with something called Backup and Sync. And you'll see I've got that option here in the lower left corner of my screen, Get Backup and Sync for Mac. If for some reason you don't see that, you might want to look here in the upper right, click on the gear symbol, download backup and sync for Mac. Either way, it should take you to a screen that looks like this. If you're using Google Drive as a personal service, just for you and or your family, then you'll want to get backup and sync. However, if you use Google Drive professionally, if you're part of a larger business or an organization that has bought into Google Drive, or if you're a teacher or a student at a school and your school has a G Suite account, a Google Apps for Education account, then instead of Backup and Sync, you're going to want to use Google Drive File Stream. But they're basically pretty similar, pretty equivalent. This is my personal account that I'm using, and so I'm going to go here and download Backup and Sync for Mac. 
You have to agree to the terms of service, which I encourage you to look through if you'd like, but I'm gonna click agree and download. It downloads it to my computer and it looks like it just barely finished downloading. Now I can click on it to open it up and it's getting ready to install backup and sync on my computer. Because I'm using Mac, you can see I get a pop-up here and it wants me just to click and drag and drop this backup and sync icon onto my applications folder. So I do that. And if you look here down on the bar at the bottom of the screen, you can see it's installing it in applications. All right, so that should be done. It should be installed at this point. I can now click on my applications folder. There's backup and sync and I can click it to open it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it's gonna open up backup and sync. On my computer, I'm getting a warning saying, I got this from the internet. Are you sure that you trust it? And yes, I do. So I open it up and now notice here on my screen that a symbol appeared. It's a cloud with an arrow pointing up, but it's grayed out in this case. And now I have to go through this wizard to get it set up. So all of my files at my fingertips, sounds good. I click get started. Step one is I need to sign in to my Google account. Just putting in my email address and password should do that. Give me a minute to do so and then I'll resume the video, okay? Next, I need to choose folders from my computer to be continuously backed up to Google Drive. So I'm just gonna click got it. And what is it that I want to back up? Right now, notice that it's backing up all files and folders. So I could change that. I could just back up photos and videos and there's also some advanced settings that I could look through. Okay, so those are some options that I could choose. Also, I can choose folders and pick specific folders that I want to back up and sync. I can also just check or uncheck these boxes to change what's gonna be synced. Now, my recommendation would be don't sync everything. Unless you have unlimited storage, you're probably not gonna want or need to upload everything to Google Drive. So I'm gonna uncheck desktop I think I'm gonna uncheck pictures. I have Google Photos for pictures, and if you haven't watched my tutorial on Google Photos, you really should. For me, I think just backing up documents, that's what I want. And within that documents folder, it'll back up all files and folders. So everything inside of documents, that'll be backed up. Next, I need to decide what kind of a quality backup do I want it to be for photos and videos. Now this pretty much only relates to photos and videos. So any photos and videos that are in my documents folder, do I want them to be backed up at a high quality or at the original quality? And so this is even higher than high quality. It's the full resolution, but it does count against your 15 gigabyte storage quota. So in many cases, you're just gonna want to switch to high quality. Now with photos, you can have it automatically add it to your Google Photos account too if you want to. In my case, I don't really wanna do that. So those are the options that I'm gonna choose and then I clicked next. The next step is if I want to, I can sync files from my online My Drive, my Google Drive, to a folder on this computer. Access the Google Drive folder using Finder. So I click got it. And so this is a little bit different than what we just did. What we just looked at is what on this computer do I want to be synced up into the cloud to my online Google Drive account? Well, this step three is kind of the opposite. It's saying, do I want to sync down to my computer from my online storage space down to my computer, things that are in my Google Drive? If so, I need to decide, do I want to sync everything in my drive or do I want to only sync certain folders? Remember earlier I created my ninth grade history folder. If that's all I want to sync down from the internet to my computer, I can just uncheck the rest. In my case though, I think I'll sync everything. So now I am pretty well done setting up download and sync for this computer. So I'll click start and notice that this icon now is activated and it's actively syncing. It's pulling things up from my computer, storing them online, and it's downloading from the internet files and folders that I've told it to sync to my computer. And you can see the folders and the files are starting to pop up. They're starting to appear in my synced folders. And so from now on, anytime I want to see my Google Drive files, all I have to do is go over to this symbol here, click, and notice that right here we have a folder. I can click that folder to open up the Google Drive folder that's on my computer. And I can see all these files. These are files that, yes, exist on this computer, but they've been synced to my computer from the cloud, from my Google Drive online account. Also, notice that here in my Finder window, 
there is an entry for Google Drive that was put there automatically when I installed Backup and Sync. And so that's another way that I can get to these files just by clicking there. I also want you to know that clicking here on the Google Drive Backup and Sync icon, it does give me a shortcut to Google Drive on the web. That'll just take me to drive.google.com and my Google Drive account. There's also a shortcut to Google Photos. And notice that you see here a list of recently updated files, files that have been synced, whether to the cloud or from the cloud down to my computer. So I've shown you now several different ways to back up your files and your folders into your Google Drive account. Once you've done that, you can go to any computer in the world. You can go to google.com, go to the Drive app, or just drive.google.com, and you will see everything that's in your cloud storage for Google Drive. There's also great apps for iPads, for Android devices, cell phones, things like that, and you can access all of these folders and files that way too. So that really is reason number one, and maybe the most important reason to start using Google Drive if you're not already using Google Drive. Reason number two is because not only can you create folders and subfolders, you can also create great online documents that are kind of like Microsoft Word documents, very similar. You can also create Google Sheets that are like Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. You can create Google Slides that are like Microsoft PowerPoint presentations, and so much more. Drawings, maps, Google Sites, and other apps like LucidChart documents. If you're interested in learning about how to create any of these items, I have a video for pretty much each of these. So if you wanted to learn how to use Google Docs, watch my video on that. Google Sheets, Google Slides, Forms, even Drawings, Maps, and Google Sites. So I would encourage you to watch those other video tutorials to learn how to create using your Google Drive account. And it's really quite simple. You just click to open up the document and then start creating and then you can save it into any of your folders or subfolders. Now the third reason to consider using Google Drive is because it gives you the ability to easily share and collaborate with other people. And I want to give you just a quick glimpse of how to do that. All you would need to do is go into your online account, select, let's say, a folder that you would like to share, and then you can go up here and click this link, or you could even just right-click on the folder, get shareable link. It copies a link to the clipboard, and anyone with that link can view this folder and its contents. Now, if you want to change that so that it's more than just can view, there are some options. You can go here to sharing settings. Notice that I turned off that link and then I can go here to sharing settings. And there's all sorts of options I can do here. I can click on advanced, for example, and I can change it so that if I click change, anyone can access this document. It's public on the web or anyone with the link can do these things. In this case, only view. But if you want, organize, add and edit. Or if I want to, I can limit access to this folder just to specific people. And I would have to select who those people are and add them here. So that's an example of how you could share folders and collaborate with other people. You can also share individual documents and files just by opening them up, clicking on the share button here in the upper right, and going through some of those same decisions that I talked about just a minute ago. Advanced, who do you want to be able to have access to the document? You can change that and you should be able to change what they can do when they access it. Just view it, or can they edit, or can they comment? So those really are the three reasons to consider using Google Drive. It's great for backing up your files and folders, it's great for creating content online in the cloud, and number three, it's great for sharing and collaborating. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. I hope that you'll consider watching my other tutorials, especially the ones that cover each of the different file types that you can create in Google Drive. And I hope that you found this tutorial to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. And if you'd like to support my channel, please consider contributing to me through my Patreon account. And you can do so by clicking on the link in the description below.